Welcome back everybody to Tech TLDR. Today we have the good, we have the bad, and we have the ugly in the space industry. We'll start off with the good, we'll work our way into the ugly, and then we'll get to SpaceX. So if you want to know all about that, be sure you stick to the very end. Drop a like in the video as always to help out the channel. Let's get into this. So the good. Let's start with that. ULA is prepping to launch its Atlas V rocket today down in Florida. The payload is going to be a missile detection and warning satellite for the U.S. Space Force. The liftoff for that is scheduled at about 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. China Zorong rover, the rover we talked about in the last episode. Some people got a little salty about that subject. That touched down on the surface of Mars successfully over the weekend. This is China's first piece of equipment on the red planet. It's their first rover, and there's no images as of yet of the actual landing but if anything good comes out i'll definitely be sure to update you guys on that and display it in my next episode so that's some of the good stuff that's happening now let's talk about the ugly stuff that is happening so new zealand's rocket lab company which we've talked about before i'm personally a big fan of them i like what they're trying to do they had a pretty big mishap this weekend so rocket lab they launched their electron rocket carrying payloads for their customers black sky and space flight however not even three minutes into the mission a problem occurred after the separation of the second stage. After the separation, the engine appeared to shut down pretty much right after it ignited. Rocket Lab, they lost control of it, they lost contact with it, and the payload as well. They were able to recover the first stage of the rocket, but the second stage, the payload, the money, that's all gone, unfortunately, for Rocket Lab. I'm really hopeful for Rocket Lab they can correct this. This isn't the first time that's happened with them either. A similar situation happened back in the summer of 2020. However, they have plenty of successful launches since then, so I'm really hopeful that they're going to get right back on track and customers will again start to trust them. The biggest problem with things like this is that people lose faith in you know, their trust in these companies and they don't want to launch their products with them and they'll go to other companies like SpaceX. And I like SpaceX, I think they're great, but I want other companies to succeed as well. But now that we've talked about some of the good and we've talked about the ugly, let's talk about the SpaceX. SpaceX successfully launched a Falcon 9 this weekend carrying 52 Starlink satellites. You're probably thinking why 52 Starlink satellites? Because it's usually 60. Well, that's because they also had the Tyvac and the Capella Synthetic Aperture Radar small sats on board as well. This was followed by the touchdown of the Falcon 9 booster. This booster's eighth landing, getting close to that record of 10. I'm surprised SpaceX used such an old booster to launch like a private company's satellite in the orbit. Because usually on you know, situations like this, they use newer technology. I know when it's human um, space flight, they don't use the, they're not trying to break records with those boosters when it comes to putting people up, up in space. So I was pretty surprised that they actually used such an old booster to deliver a payload for a private company. I got to look into too, if it's something they actually have to agree upon before they put it into orbit. Like, hey, we're going to use a really old recycled piece of equipment. Are you guys okay with this? And you're still going to pay us the full amount. I wonder what that negotiation table is like. Now let's talk about the Starship. So there hasn't been much exciting Starship news since the last episode, but there is some interesting activity going on down in Boca Chica. So let's talk about that. Starship SN15, it's now on launch pad B, standing tall with its chest puffed out knowing it made SpaceX history. SN15 is currently being inspected to evaluate reflight possibilities, as well as collecting overall data for SpaceX's team to approve of them. Starship SN16 is still in its high bay and it's still unclear if SpaceX will roll out the SN16 to try to launch it or go for the SN15 refly first. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm curious what you guys think SpaceX will do first. And speaking of Starships rolling out, there are now two new gigantic cranes being assembled down near the launch facility, presumably for moving Starships and other pieces of ground equipment in Starbase. That's right, we're not talking about Boca Chica anymore. SpaceX finally lit up the Starbase sign, pretty much saying the city of tomorrow is here. Boca Chica, you guys can leave. This is our town now. Let's get building rockets. That's all I have for you guys in today's episode. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to drop a like, drop a comment down below, subscribe if you're not already, and have 